first time you're tuning in, uh, we are an appliance repair company up in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, we also service now the Los Angeles area. And today we actually are in the Richmond area of the Bay and we're servicing a Samsung dishwasher. And a little bit of backstory about this dishwasher is it's had no previous issues. It's been running like a gem. And that really does have to do primarily with the owners of the unit. They've taken immaculate care of this unit. It's not fairly new, but it's not old either. And it is almost in spotless condition. It's, I've, well, I can't say anything really much better about it for uh, the age of the unit. Uh, what's going on with this unit is actually, it's proprietary to the Samsungs, uh, specifically the newer gen units. They have what's called a water wall system. And what it is is the water spindle uh, that is typically on most dishwashers that spins in a circle to wash. This actually goes back and forth with a motorized unit. So obviously more mechanics, more problems, as I always say. But what's going on is, and I'll show you guys in a second, the water wall that's supposed to be going back and forth is still functional, but it does make a, a noise when it's running. All right, guys. So got you guys a little bit. Uh, closer in here. So the water wall system is right here, pretty much everything that you see in the red. And we'll get to that in a second, but I kind of want to just address the model of this unit. Pretty much all the water wall systems that Samsung provides is going to have almost an identical repair to what this is. There might be a couple variations, but it's not much of a difference. Uh, I'll tell you the model number here and I'll try to list all the model numbers that are specific to this part that we're going to replace today. Uh, but just the model number on this unit is a uh, Delta Whiskey 80 Juliet 7550 Uniform Golf. And then this one is a forward slash AA. Um, so if you have this exact unit, then this is gonna be almost the uh, same exact repair. But if you don't, if you have a similar system, you can still follow along because the repair is gonna be very, very similar to this unit. All right, guys. So this is the water wall system. Uh, as you can see, it is a little bit different than a generic dishwasher. And what you have going on here is there is a motorized arm and a belt driven spray arm. And what happens, and you're gonna kind of hear the noise, it's not as bad now, it was a lot bad, a lot worse when I tested it uh, the other day. But when this is going forward and back, there's kind of a little bit louder of a noise than it needs to be and sometimes the owners of the home have stated that the spray arm will be stuck in the same position. So it means that it's not moving back and forth. Um, so what the motor assembly for this unit is actually back in this compartment right here. Uh, and they sell it in two different configurations. You can just buy the motor itself or you can buy the entire casing that comes with all the tubing and everything that's included in it. And I'll, uh, I'll show you guys that in a second. But to do this repair, we are gonna need to remove the dishwasher and take it out to be able to access the back panel, which I'll show you all of that in a second as well. Uh, but just to get started, um, there are two little, uh, little pull-out tabs in the back right here, which I'm gonna show you how to get out. All right, so I'm gonna try to get you guys in as close as possible here so you guys can kind of see what's going on. So what would be kind of the best tool to use? And you kind of have multiple options. If you don't have these tools, you, you pretty much just need something that's gonna be able to pry. And uh, what I'm using is just kind of like this little pick. That'll focus. If you don't have something like this, uh, you can also use, you know, I'm trying to be DIY friendly. Uh, let's see what these homeowners have. Maybe they have like a little stick or something I can use. But yeah, you could use anything. You could use a fork. You can pretty much use anything. So I'm gonna use this one. Uh, this one kind of has a little bit of a curve to the end of it, which is gonna be a little bit more helpful when I'm removing the tab. There's two tabs back here. There's one right here and there's one right here. And what that is holding is holding the spray arm assembly, which is gonna have two little screws in it. Um, they're Phillips head screws. You can use a handheld screw, uh, screwdriver or you can use an impact. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these two tabs. As you can see, they come right off like that. And you wanna set those aside, uh, don't lose them. Good little compartment is this little soap dispenser. Just don't forget you put it in there. Oh, that one fell back there. We'll get it in a second. But what we wanna do next is get our impact. And I have a Phillips 
head on there. And we're gonna take those two screws out. Be gentle with it. It's holding plastic components, so you don't want it to break. That one's out. That one's out as well. Uh, they're still inside, but this whole casing is gonna come off. So we're gonna go ahead, lift that up. So this, uh, this spray arm assembly, it kind of works as like when you're hanging like a painting on the wall, it has like a little hook. So you're gonna slide this forward first and then you're gonna lift it up. So don't try to pull this off because it's not gonna come off. You wanna come forward, I'll actually lift this up a little bit like this, push forward and then come up. See that? And when you're gonna, what you're gonna see in here, those two screws fell, but that's that little hook I'm talking about. So it kind of has like a little connection and it hooks right in here. So we're gonna take this entire assembly out. You can see that belt uh, driven system inside. You can see that little yellow system. It's a belt that goes back and forth. So when I go like that, you hear there's not much of a noise there. Um, and that right there connects into the little spray arm mo motor, which is right here, the little silver tip. So we're gonna set this aside up here. We're gonna grab our two screws that were holding that down. And then we're gonna grab that little plastic clip. So in total, you should have four pieces in your hand. So it's gonna be two screws and two covers. And like I said, I just put it in the soap dispenser here so I don't lose it. Right here, this entire assembly is one piece. This whole thing is gonna come out with the motor and everything and that's all uh, underneath. But before we do that, we're gonna to need to remove the upper spray arm because that's being held in place as well. So we're gonna take off this upper spray arm assembly. As you can see, this is just like any typical dishwasher. So like I said, most dishwashers are gonna have a typical spray arm system, but Samsung has a proprietary system. So this one on top spins like a regular spray arm and most dishwashers you've probably seen just have this on the bottom, the middle and the top. So the top spray arm is gonna have two little metal tabs. There's one on this side and there's one on the other side. You could take a little uh, flathead uh, screwdriver you're gonna pry up on one side, lift that tab up, and then pry on the other side as well until it dangles. And you can see the two tabs just right here. All right, so now that we have the top one off, which is dangling right here, we're gonna go ahead and take the middle one off. I'm gonna zoom you guys in here just so it focuses a little bit better. There we go. So we're gonna take that one off, same thing. Uh, it has two clips, one on the left, one on the right. We're gonna pry until we get that clip off. Same thing on this side. And now you can see the spray arm is loose over here. All right, perfect. So now that we have the top arm and the middle one off, uh, there's just a little gasket on the bottom here. We're gonna lift up slowly and then that entire assembly is gonna come right out. And we're just gonna set it aside. We're gonna put it in the sink here just so it's not dripping everywhere. And like I said before, don't forget that you <laughs> If you put your screws in the soap dispenser here, don't forget that you had that in there. So I'm gonna actually gonna take these out because I'm about to close the door. So most dishwashers have a pretty standard situation when it comes to how it's mounted. Uh, in this unit, the mounting is done pretty standard. Uh, there are two screws up here that are screwed into the top of the counter to ensure that the dishwasher, when you're opening the door, doesn't tip over, it's the proper installation method. In some cases, some dishwashers have screws that are screwed into the sides of the cabinets as well. There's little pockets here for those, but uh, that was not the installation method of this unit. So we're just gonna take our impact. We're gonna have two screws up here, one on the top. Top right, and then one on the top left. Be gentle with it. They're not secured very strong or anything like that, just kind of in there. I'm gonna set these aside up here on the counter. We're gonna close the door and uh, check on the bottom kick plate here. Uh, they look like they uh, installed a custom kick plate to match the, what do you call it, uh, the baseboards on the bottom here. So let's take a look and see what we got here. Looks like it's connected with Velcro. Uh, there's that kick plate. And then there is a factory kick plate 
as well that has two Phillips screws. Most dishwashers, like I said, are the same in this aspect. Pretty dirty down here. All right, so we're gonna set these aside again. Two Phillips screws. I'm gonna put these screws on top here. I'm gonna set these aside as well. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna slowly start pulling out the dishwasher. Depending on the installation of the dishwasher, you're gonna have one of two difficulties. One, the water line might be too short and you might have to go and disconnect the water line from the sink. And also the drain line might be too short and you might have to disconnect it. If it was done properly, they should be both long enough for you to be able to maintenance this without doing that. But we've seen a lot of times in the past that that is not the case. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab the bottom of the dishwasher and slowly maneuver it forward, inch by inch, to slowly pull this out. Once you get it out this much, you never wanna use the door. I see a lot of contractors, they, they use the door itself. They'll start yanking it like this to pull it out. Uh, I mean, you can do whatever you want. I'm not gonna tell you how to do your trade, but like this is not what you wanna be doing, you know? You wanna be pulling it from the bottom just a little bit so there's not a bunch of torque on the door. And then once you get it out a little bit, you're gonna pull from the sides. But before you do that, you wanna to try to locate the outlet for this unit. Specifically for this one, I think it's underneath the sink. So I'm actually gonna grab my flashlight and unplug that. Typically, that line is usually the shortest. So let's see here, yep. So the outlet for that is just right here. I'm gonna unplug that, double check that the dishwasher is not, oh, that was the, the wrong cable. That was for the garbage disposal. Let's unplug that. There we go. So that's off. And uh, the hole goes from the side on the left here. So we're gonna just dangle that there so we can pull it out. So we're gonna pull it out slowly. Like I said, we wanna make sure that the lines behind there are not too, you know, too long or too, I mean, too short because it's gonna cause a difficulty for us when we're removing the unit. So we're gonna slowly start wiggling it out. If you feel any tension or pressure at all, stop what you're doing. I'm gonna slowly get this out. All right. All right, guys, uh, we're back in the dishwasher just real quick. I wanted to mention one thing that I didn't really miss, but just a little bit of a detail. I'm gonna zoom in here for you guys just to make it a little bit more clear. So this center port was initially for the upper spray arm. Um, so no worries about that one, but the two on the left and right here is what connects the lower water um, spray arm, the one that we took off the water wall. And if you take a look right here, these are the two nozzles that connect to the left and the right. So the middle one is that uh, the one that goes all the way up and the left and right one, which I'll show you in here, there are two um, O-rings on them. So you have to make sure that you take those off because on the new ones, um, so when you see the two little black O-rings, black gloves, it's not really, let me put it on my wrists so you see them. So there's two little O-rings, just like that. Make sure you take those off. Um, and uh, the new ones don't have them. So I want to show you guys the new part. This is the new part straight from Samsung, right there. It is part number, I don't know if it'll focus. It is part number Delta Delta 97-00210. Alpha. Okay, so this is that entire assembly. You actually can just buy the motor and pretty much any of those parts individually, um, but I really don't recommend it. If you were to buy just the part, the motor itself, which I'll actually open this new box up and show you guys what it looks like. So this is the entire assembly, see? You can buy all of these things 
separately. You can buy this motor completely by itself. So this is initially what our situation is. This is what the problem is. But the reason I don't recommend it is more often than not what we see is why this motor goes bad and starts grinding is because there's a little seal here. And if anyone's ever replaced like a diverter valve, if you're a contractor if you, and you're seeing this, if you're an appliance repair company, if you've ever seen the di diverters on like Kenmore's or Whirlpool's and uh, you see that it's leaking from the diverter valve, this is a very similar thing to those. So 90% of the time, these companies will go out there and they'll replace the diverter valve. In this case, you might replace this uh, water system motor, but the motor is not the issue. What's going on is the seal is actually leaking onto the motor and causing it to short. So if you go and just pull this motor out and then replace the motor a couple weeks later, a day or whatever it might be, it'll still leak from that old seal and cause the motor to fail again. So I'm not sure if this one's leaking. I don't remember if it is, but it's still better just to buy the whole assembly. I think this part is like $90 by itself and this whole thing is like 120. So I don't know, I, th I think it's worth it. Just the extra, not, not that big of an extra. So, you know, I would recommend just buying the whole thing. It's very similar to the diverter valve situation. And if you do have a diverter valve, issue if you don't know if you're a contractor if you've made this mistake the diverter valve is almost never the problem for the leak it's actually the entire sump the entire bottom sump assembly needs to be removed because it has a grommet gasket like this that fails so just keep that in mind so we're going to go in the back of the unit now there's actually an access panel which is super funny uh, but just so well, we don't lose these two uh, gaskets i'm going to put them into the left and right hole here because uh, the, the new one doesn't come with it. So we don't lose it. I'm going to set this aside. All right, guys. So now we're behind the unit. We're going to go ahead and take off this access panel. And this is why I say this is super funny. Because, like, if they have an access panel here, they know very well from the beginning that this is something that's going to go bad. And you'll see these kind of things here and there with certain brands and certain companies, they always make these access panels. Like this access panel is specifically for that mechanism, absolutely nothing else. You pretty much have access to nothing but that mechanism. And I just think that is hilarious. But basically what you're gonna see, you're gonna see all of those hoses that are connected to the circulation pump. So you have the two on the left and right for the actual water wall system. And then the one in the middle here is for uh, the spray arm that goes up. And what we're gonna do, we're just gonna grab some pliers um, or just like a crescent plier. I don't know what this tool is specifically called. I'm sure you guys have seen these before. And uh, we're actually gonna use these to take off the hose clamps. You're just gonna press on them and it's gonna crimp and then you're gonna slide downward. You do that to the middle one as well. Slide downward, just like that, and then we'll do that to this one. Be careful of the, the wiring right here on the left-hand side. Actually, I'm gonna take out the wiring first just so I don't accidentally nick it. I know my look. I'm just gonna pull the wiring. They're just little tab clips. Let me get, get it focused on that side so you guys can see it. There's two wires here. One of them uh, controls the motor. And the other one is a, that's a sensor of some sort. So we're gonna have these come aside this way. And then we're gonna take off the last hose clamp on the right here. Let me just adjust this a little bit. And I'll lower it down. Okay. All right, so I kind of just went ahead and moved you guys just a little bit closer. Uh, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna actually remove these three hoses. And uh, it's pretty simple. They might be a little tight on there. So you wanna just kind of, uh, you can use like a little flathead screwdriver. Just make sure you don't uh, pierce the hose. Let me see where I put that screwdriver, right here. So we're gonna get it in from the side here and slowly lower this one. There might be a little bit of water. So just keep that in mind. This is the one of the lower parts of the dishwasher. And then we'll do this one right here as well. A little bit of a pry, just to loosen the seal. And move 
to the side, just like that. All right, so I would recommend taking these two off first and then, because uh, you're gonna have to take these little nuts off, they're little plastic washers or nuts. So you can just use your pliers again, crimp onto them and give it one little turn and then you can remove them by hand. And they're just little half turn nuts and then they come off. Same thing with this one. Give it one little turn. And that one's a little stingier. There you go, little half turn. Take that one off too. Move the whole dishwasher this way so you can see the last one. Now I'm gonna take this hose, bend it aside, move it this way, give myself a little bit more room. Because uh, once I move um, this hose, I can't go this way with the hose, so I want to bring the new hose, this, the, the old hose, not the old hose, the right hose this way. So give it a little tug. Pull it down to the left, just like that. A little half turn. I'm right-handed, so if I was left-handed, this side would be easier. I'd go on the other side and do it. Just give it a little turn here. All right, let's try it like this. There we go. We're always learning. All right. Man, this is not wanting to focus, huh? All right, so I got these three off. Just like that. All right, next what we're gonna do is move these hoses aside as much as we can because there is another one like this, but bigger. And I'm gonna grab the old, uh, the new part just to kind of show you what I mean by that. So as you can see, uh, these these are the hoses, basically what you're seeing on the bottom here. And these little plastic tabs connect onto them. And then basically what they do is they go on like this and then they do a little turn like that. So the same thing is for the motor here. The motor has a big ring around it. And then there is a little white, uh, there's a big white tab like this that actually turns and locks this motor into place or this housing into place. So we're gonna have to move these hoses aside um, best that we can so then we can reach that connector it's a little bit hard to get out so be patient with me while I do this I might have to fast forward the video a little bit here but let me see if we can lift the dishwasher just a little bit so you can see it better you see that little you see that white tab back there so we're gonna do our best to try to move these hoses aside and just bend them away from you best you can. Just like that. You can be rough with them. They're flexible enough. All right. So I'm gonna try it with this. Uh, I haven't done this one in a while. Yeah, it's not gonna fit. Um, another thing you could do is you could get a screwdriver and just place it on one of the little tabs here and give it a little tap. Yeah, I see it turning. Let's see if we can do it better. There it goes. So just a little half turn and then it comes right out just like that. Hopefully it'll be that easy to put it back on. So the little little tabs, big tab, okay? Now what we're gonna do, um, I think I'm gonna keep it in this position because at this point, uh, it's pretty loose up here. You can see I can pretty much push this out. I don't think I need to show you guys again, but I'm gonna go in the dishwasher, open the door, and I'm gonna remove this from the inside and then I'll bring it to the front. So I'm gonna keep you guys on the back here just so you guys can see it. 
and I'm gonna lift it. I'm in the dishwasher right now. Careful for the wiring and everything. And that's it. So this is the old motor assembly. As you can see, and I don't see any moisture around it or anything. So it might've just been that the motor, you know, just started to fail. But now you can see it's empty cavity. You have the center hole and you have the three holes here in on the top. All right, now that we have that old component t uh, taken out, uh, what we wanna do, so this is the new one right here. I have it right in front of me. Remember those two little seals I was telling you guys about? Don't forget to, I gotta put this on my wrist every time so you guys can see it. The black gloves, you know, whatever. Little O-rings. <laughs> here, I'll put it on this thing so you guys can see it. The two little O-rings. Uh, what you want to do with any type of o-ring or seal pretty much for any unit before you're putting it on what i did i asked the homeowner for a little bit of dish soap i don't know if you guys can see it on this there's a little dish soap in this bowl and what i'm going to do i'm going to stick my fingers inside the dish soap just a little bit and i'm going to take it and rub it on the actual seals just a little bit like that place it inside and that just, what it's gonna do is gonna help create a good seal um, for any of those components. That one too. And now what I'm gonna do is, actually I should've done it the other way. Those seals are probably gonna pop out, but same thing for this bottom panel. This entire black piece right here is the gasket that's gonna keep water from getting into all these components. I'm gonna take a little bit of dish soap and I'm just gonna lather it all around the unit. Just a little thin coat because we don't want a dry seal on uh, the unit. It's not gonna seal well. You might have leaks in the beginning before it gets set up. So we're just gonna light thin coat all around. Don't put too much, just so it gets saturated with, uh, with the gasket. See, that's all kind of shiny. Now I'm gonna go and grab a little paper towel and I'm gonna go inside the unit, which I, you guys don't have to see this, but I'm just wiping any of the excess water or if there's any like food deposits or anything that could have been underneath there. So I'm in the dishwasher right now, you guys can see me. Maybe you see my hand, hello. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just wiping it down. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the new part and we're going to feed it through the, through the inside. So first things first, we're gonna feed the wires. Make sure none of the wires get stuck. You don't wanna pinch any of the wires. Then we're gonna push the hoses through until we get a good seal. I don't know, I didn't like that. Pull that up again. There we go. All right. Make sure you get it right. This tapered side is on the bottom. This is the top. So you're gonna feed the wires through. Make sure you do that right or it's not gonna connect onto it. Just like that. And then we're gonna get it on there. And then we're gonna give it, find where that connection is. You're gonna have to spin it around a couple times until you find where it clicks. There's two, there's three tabs on here and then the tabs fit into a groove. So you gotta mess with it a little bit. So i probably fast forward a little bit until I get this.
man, that was a nightmare. That honestly took a good 45 seconds. <laughs> it wasn't too bad, but it, it is in a little bit of a tight spot. I'm just gonna give it one more quick tap, make sure it's in place. And I'm giving light taps. They're little plastic pieces, so I'm gonna push up on it a little bit, make sure it's not wanting to pop out. Great. Now we're gonna grab the other three. We we'll wanna put these on before we put on the hoses. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these wires around now. At this point, we can put these wires aside here. We'll start on the right side because the right hose is the first one we're gonna put on. Doesn't really matter for these nuts, but. All right, ready, tidy. And again, it's a little half turn, but uh, once you get it on there, you can use your little wrench. Ah, see, now we can go this way. That's what I messed up on last time. Let's see if I can get this to focus there. Move the whole thing this way. Come on, work with me. I'm on camera. There we go. And just turn it until it's snug. You don't have to force anything. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of soap. Soap is your best friend. It's gonna help things lubricate and slide in a lot easier. So we're gonna put a little bit there and a little bit inside the hose as well. And now the hose is gonna slide on a million times easier. Just add a little bit of upward pressure. Let's get these wires out of the way. And then we'll use these. Lift it up. It's completely seated. And then we're gonna move these hose clamps. Come on. Just like that. So now it's perfectly seated. We can go ahead and plug these wires in. The wires are both different, so they're not you can't really mess this up. The three prong goes on the right side and then the, the four prong uh, will go on the left. There we go. I'm gonna put that in that little cavity. Now we're gonna find our other hose, which is right here. So we're gonna put this connector on now. All right, I'm gonna grab some dish soap. Lubricate. Then we're gonna grab the hose. Just found its way to the bottom here. We're gonna lubricate inside the hose as well. Slip that on. All right. Now we're gonna lift our hose clamp. Use your hand to put some upward pressure on the hose while you adjust the clamp. And I want my clamps to be straight. They don't have to be straight, but OCD things. 
All right, I'm gonna move this hose aside. And I'm gonna put our clip on. Give it that half turn. And get that wrench on it. Until it's secure. All right, get some of that soap. And then inside the inlet as well. And then now we're gonna get the the hose on, just like that. All right. The hard part is done. I'm gonna leave this back panel off for a second. The next steps, uh, we're gonna flood test the unit. So just as you would with like a shower pan and when you're doing a new construction, uh, you wanna check your work, you know? We're not perfect, we make mistakes. Uh, even the best companies out there, they can make mistakes. But the best companies are the ones that are held accountable for their mistakes and the ones that you know, we'll say, hey, you know what, I made a mistake, but I'm gonna fix it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna avoid that situation by doing a flood test. I'm gonna plug in the unit again. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it. You don't have to put all that other stuff in there, uh, the motor arms and all that. Just run it, fill it with water, and make sure there isn't any leaks back here. If there is, shut off the unit, and then we're gonna and just address what the circumstances. I'm using an ex extension cord because the wire isn't long enough to the outlet. And uh, now I'm gonna leave you guys here while I go over there and turn on the unit just to see if anything is leaking. I'm gonna click the power button, put it on the express cycle. And then I'm gonna run it. Okay. So right now it's uh, draining the unit if there was any water. So I'm just gonna fast forward this part for you guys. But, uh, you know, I'll be messing around here with my uh, mirror and everything and making sure there's no leaks of any kind. Be thorough, guys. Can you see the camera? No. Here the circulation pump just turned on. So it's a good time to check. The great thing about this dishwasher is there's so much dust down here that if anything dripped, I would see it. So I'm not sure if the microphone is picking up the water sounds, but here, let me unclip this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in there and check with the mirror a little bit more. I don't want any little drips. I don't want any, I don't want anything. You know, we, we pride ourselves in our work. So, you know, all of our guys, they always, they do their job thoroughly. We don't want recalls, guys. No one wants recalls. You don't want to go and redo your work. You don't want to go and waste your time. Just be thorough. Take another five, ten minutes. Run the machine. Check everything. Make sure there is no issues whatsoever. Save yourself. Save yourself a lot. I mean, there's a lot that comes from being thorough. One, you know, obviously there's pride in the work. Two, you know... Clients appreciate you doing the, the extra mile and, you know, checking everything and making sure everything is done right. You know, you don't want to get a bad review because, you know, you flooded their house or even worse, an insurance claim. 
So just be thorough. I mean, we pride ourselves in our work. I mean, all these years we've been in business, not once have we gotten an insurance claim, a complaint about any damages that we've done to anybody's property. So just be thorough, guys. So the circulation pump just ran at a higher pressure setting. So I'm gonna let it do its thing for one more minute and then I'm gonna drain it. Looks really good so far. I don't see any signs of leaks. I can feel the water going through the hoses. So this is great. I'm gonna go ahead and drain it now actually. Sounds, sounds fine. We're gonna hold start button for three seconds. And that's gonna go ahead and drain the unit. While it's draining, we're gonna go ahead and put this access panel back on. Just like so. Two Phillips screws. Plastic components, you don't need much. Just like so. All right, everything looks great. No leaks, no nothing. Perfect, exactly what we want. So now pretty much all we do is we put everything back exactly how we found it. Um, first things first, uh, I'm gonna adjust the hoses in the back here and slowly start pushing them in. Be careful not to um, accidentally crimp or you know bend anything. The shortest line we have here is actually the the power cord so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull that forward as much as I can and then at the end we'll pull the rest of the way. But uh, yeah we're gonna align it be careful not to nick the cabinets and everything. Doing your job as thorough as possible from beginning to end, or like always. I mean, you don't wanna finish everything. Everything's looking great. Everything's going just how it needs to go. And then bam, you scratch the cabinet. So gonna be slow and steady. We're gonna look on that side and then look on this side. And then slowly we're gonna wiggle it in. And then once we get it in about say 50% of the way, we're gonna go ahead and start pulling the hoses just so we don't accidentally uh, you know, pinch anything. And also the power line. There we go. Perfect. Now we're gonna Push it the rest of the way in. Again, if you feel any resistance at any point, stop what you're doing. So we're gonna align the dishwasher exactly how it was. You can see the gaps here. Let's move it over just a little bit. It's all soapy in here. All right. It's looking real good. So we're just gonna repeat the same steps. I'm gonna grab the impact. Here, two screws. And uh, we're gonna try to use the same holes again Luckily, it looks like all the work that was done here previously, they always use the same hole. So, not too much to worry about alignment. I'm gonna fix all these little seals here on the side, just in case. Let's see if we can get it shifted over just a little bit. There we go. All right, next what we're gonna do, so we're gonna put the little, uh, 
what do you call it? The O-rings. So those O-rings are what are gonna hold these ports and seal them uh, perfectly. Now, what I did is basically these two little O-rings, as always, we wanna always make sure we take care of them. So they're both in those uh, left and right holes. Now what we're gonna do is our uh, top and middle spindle arm connector, we're gonna go ahead and place this in the middle hole. Just like so. And then it's gonna clip right here in the middle. And then uh, I'm not gonna adjust the camera again, but you know, there's one up here as well, same thing. You just clip it. Sometimes they could bend during when you were doing it. So you can just use your fingers to bend the metal back. So then they can clip back into place. Not a big deal, super, super system, super easy system up top there. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our water wall system, which is the motor that goes back and forth. Okay, do you guys see that little silver notch? That silver notch moves as you move the belt system. So that is kind of like a keyhole. You have to make sure this line is lined up with the little notch on the motor. So if you look at the little uh, metal motor head, it's circular all around it, but on one side of it, it's cut. And that's so the motor has something to grip onto and you have to make sure it aligns with that silver on the rail. So if you look at it on this side, it's uh, the cutout is right on this side. I can spin it to whatever direction I want, but I rather spin the one on the actual plastic um, than uh, the motor down there. So what I'm gonna do is uh, it's, it's opposite basically. So I'm gonna align, let me see if I can get you guys. I'm gonna align this so it hooks on over there. So let's get that aligned just roughly. And you'll know if it doesn't fit because um, it just, it won't go in. So I'm gonna zoom you guys out real quick. So remember on this side right here, there's a little keyhole, kind of how the painting is, how paintings are when you hang it on the wall. So if you take a look here, I'm gonna make sure it's, if I go forward a little bit, it's not gonna, it's not gonna set. You see, it's kind of, I can still lift it up. I'm gonna tilt the back up, move this back as much as I can, and then slide it on. Once it hooks on, you can't lift it up. See that? Next, I'm gonna go all the way to the back. Let's get you zoomed in there. All the way to the back. And then that back is gonna have the two O-rings. That right O-ring popped out a little. The two O-rings, get those set, it, set in. And then I'm gonna move the motor around just a little bit because if it's not, there we go. So now, you hear the motor? See the motor is spinning now. Remember we have the two screws for the back panel, the two clips that hold the wash arm. And uh, that'll focus. There we go. So again, it's gonna be a Phillips. We're gonna use our impact. And we're just gonna get them in really slowly. Again, this all screws into plastic. You don't need much. So we're gonna put those in the holes first. And then slowly get the first one in. And then the second one. All right. So now we're gonna get our little plastic tabs. And uh, they only go in one way. So I don't know if you guys can see the little notch. There's a notch on the front side. So both of them need to go with the notches on the front. Sorry if I'm blocking you. I don't really have any other way to get in here. <laughs> Move my arm. There we go. And that just clips in there. All right, so we're almost there. Not much left guys. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start up the unit and uh, we're just gonna run it again 
make sure the motor is not making noises or anything. While it's doing that, we're gonna just finish up, do our little cleanup here, and also put the kick plate on on the bottom. So remember the kick plate, we have the two screws here that uh, attach to the kick plate on the bottom here. So we're gonna go ahead and put these on. Where did I put my flashlight? There we go. And it's just two screws, one on the left, one on the right. Pretty self-explanatory. I wanna align this the best that I can because uh, the homeowners uh, put a, Vel a Velcro uh, connection on the bottom with this wood to match their uh, baseboard. And while I'm here, I'll probably clean up that baseboard a little bit. It's kind of dusty. Give that one little zap in. And then give this one one as well. Let's make sure the dishwasher is aligned on the bottom here. Grab a piece of paper towel. Clean that up a little. that kick plate. Perfect. All right, everybody. So we are almost completely done at this point. I'm running the test cycle. The water has filled and now it is circulating. Sounds like a, a jet engine right now just because the, the cavity is completely empty. Usually when there's plates and everything inside, it kind of diffuses the sound, but right now, I don't know if you can hear it. Very loud. But I'm gonna go ahead, the client gave me a little microfiber towel. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the black stainless steel. Fingerprints show like crazy on this, so. You know, if you don't have a microfiber, I mean, never be afraid to ask. I mean, clients like stuff like that, you know, when you're just a little extra thorough. I usually carry one in the car, but I didn't have one with me today. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give that a little wipe down. And uh, basically what we're gonna be looking for now, so I'm gonna open this slowly, is you have the, the water wall uh, arm. So right now it's all the way in the back position. And if I open this up in a little bit here, I might need to fast forward it, uh, the video. But once I open that, it should be in a different position. I know it's working, but uh, just to check it, because at first I put it in the front and now it's in the back, but go ahead and click start again. I'm gonna let that run for a little bit here. So we're gonna fast forward the video until it's in, a, until it's in its next position. All right, now it's in fighter jet mode again, so I'll let it go for a little bit. Well, it moved a little bit. It used to be all the way back, but now it's a little bit forward. But anyway, it's, it's working, it's doing its thing. Uh, I don't wanna keep running this thing forever. I'm gonna be here forever, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click the reset for three seconds and then it's gonna start to drain. All right. That's it. That's the repair. Uh, if you guys have any questions, like always, uh, feel free to you know leave us a comment. Uh, our email is also on our website. It's also, I think, on the channel and the About page. So if you guys ever have any questions, if you guys need, ever need any help with anything, I mean, if we have time and when we have time, we always want to help out everybody. I mean, it, it takes two seconds most of the time for us to answer any questions that you guys might have. So we always encourage you guys to comment. And uh, if you like the video and if it helped you in any way whatsoever, uh, feel free to like, share, and also subscribe. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great day.